Praise the Lord. Welcome this morning. We are so glad that each and every one of you is here. If you would, why don't you stand with us and we are going to welcome the presence of the Lord into this place. He is such a wonderful God and he deserves praise. He deserves honor and he deserves some glory today. Lord, we, we love you, God. You're such an incredible God. We magnify your holy name, Jesus. There is none like you, O oh Lord. And we have come to exalt you and magnify your holy name. Oh, how we love you, Jesus. We magnify you, Lord. We exalt you. We live God. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. We magnify your holy name. has a will for us. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Sometimes you don't always know exactly what the will of God is. Yeah. Sometimes it may be difficult, and at times it is. But for the most part, it's not. It's easy. Most of the time, I have self. When I look in the mirror, my number one enemy is me. Right. Right. It gets right. in the way. And I don't know what the will of God is for you this morning. I know the Bible talks about the will of God for not for being for men not to perish, to know him, and to come to repentance as a church body. Amen. And if there's any good thing that God wants for you, that's the will of God. Yes. But I guess this morning my thoughts to you, and we've been here before, you've heard this, you know, I don't know what the will of God is for you. But if you are in need of anything good, all things come down from God. Right. Right. Good. And if you're in need of anything, joy, peace, happiness, whatever it is, that's the will of God right. you know, for you to have it. If you need to repent, baptize in Jesus' name. Right. If you need infilling of the Holy Ghost, that's the will of God. Yes. Amen. Yes. The will of God for me this morning is to be here and to feel his presence. Yes. Yes. I want to feel the presence of God. Amen. Hallelujah. If I don't feel the presence of God and draw close to him, sometimes it's a lonely thing. Right. You know, when you're out there by yourself, you know God is with you and everything. And I know he's with me and I have his word. But there's Amen. something about the presence of God. Oh, yes. Yes. Amen. 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 So this morning while we pray, Empty your hearts to God. I mean, He already knows anyway, but we have a right. will. Right. Yes. Ourself. And we got to let go of that and let God be God. Amen. Right. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning for your goodness and your mercy, for your loving kindness. We thank you, Lord, that you have brought us here today for a purpose. We ask you, Lord, that you would have your way in the service through the singing of songs, the preaching of the word, the worship, Lord. We lift you up, God, today. I pray for this body of believers that we would humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, that we would give our hearts to you, that your will would be done in our lives. Oh, have your wonderful way, oh Lord, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your will be done in the house of God. Let your will be done in our lives today. And we thank you for it in the name of Jesus.
morning this fullness of joy. We don't understand why he loved us. The Bible tells us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. He didn't wait for us to get good to get him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But he came to us. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Found in your hands, fullness of joy, every fear, suddenly wiped away. Here in your presence, all of my
to this place. It doesn't matter what you have, what you possess. Nothing really matters except being in the presence of God. And one of these days, hopefully, we will all attain that presence of God for eternity. And then, for sure, it will not matter what sorrow that we ever had in our life or what things that we ever had in our life because we will be in the perfect presence of God. Hallelujah. If you can feel His presence right now, why don't you just give Him a hand clap of praise in this place right now. Amen. Amen. before the Lord right now. We need to remember Sister Jenny Perkins' dad. He's had three heart attacks since Thursday and he may be having to have another surgery. We need to remember Finn. He's been feeling uh, ill and needs the Lord to touch his body. We need to remember Mark Morris who's also having heart issues that surgery can't fix. We need to remember Aubrey Matthews for pregnancy complications. The Pride family, which is Sister Ada's family. We need to remember Monica and Tony who are battling with cancer. Monica is also having seizures. We need to remember Tony, or I'm sorry, Hannah, because she needs to find the truth and she needs to get sober. We need to remember Carolyn Rogers who's having back pain and Chloe. She still needs the Lord to touch her body. We need to remember Ryan Forbes for revelation of truth and concentration. And we need to continually remember our community. And I believe that there's probably people in this place today who have needs that they did not mention. And there might be somebody in this place who would like to come up and have the ministry to lay hands on them for their need today. And if you want to do that, you can do that at any time when we start praying in this place. But I just want to say that no matter what you brought into this place today, God is in this room and He is here to minister to your need today. He cares about you, even though you might not even understand what that really feels like. God is in this place and He loves you. And He wants to move in your life. And He wants you to leave different than when you came in here. He wants you to feel more free than when you came in here. He wants you to feel like the weights aren't so heavy anymore. God is awesome, and, and He wants to love you today. He wants to change your life today. Let's take these needs before Him right now and pray. And then, like I said, if you have a need and you want to come up and be prayed for, you can do that at this time. Lord, we worship you today. You are awesome, and you are holy, God. And we lift you up in this place. God, we've come before you with saying, Lord. We've come before you with praise today, Lord. Right now, God, we're asking Lord, that you would move in our needs, Lord, that you would touch lives that are sick, Lord, that you would touch them and that you would heal them, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray right now against cancer, Lord. I lose your healing in those bodies of those people who have cancer right now, Lord. Those people who are having back pain, God, I pray that you would touch their back, Lord. You made our bodies, God, and you know how to make them whole again, Lord. In the name of Jesus, you are a healer, God. You are a miracle worker, Lord. In the name of Jesus right now, God, I pray for the people that need peace, God, and strength in their life today. God, those who have suffered loss of some kind, God, in the name of Jesus right now, God, I pray that you would give them peace that passes understanding, Lord. In Jesus' name. God, for those people who need to be loosed from the bonds of addiction, God, those people who need to be delivered from anything that they brought into this place, God, whether it's depression or whatever it is, God, you know and you see more than we can, God, and I pray right now that deliverance would fly this place in this room right now, God, that it would just come to someone right now, God, and that it would just move on their life, God, and that you would just have your way in their life, God, that they would open up their heart to you right now, in Jesus' name, have your way, God. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, I pray that you would help us, God, to remember our community, God, to reach out, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that we would be open and ready to receive the truth, God, that we would be hungry to find somebody who needs to know about you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, Lord, let your spirit fall into this place today, hallelujah, we worship you.
Understand today that this wasn't always the case, but we've had an experience with the mighty God. Amen. 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 Jesus Christ, the Bible tells us that God's grace has appeared to all men. He's appeared to all men, and it's available for each of you today. If you're thankful for that promise of his word, would you just go ahead and give the Lord a great hand clap of praise as the praise team is joining us this morning. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Why don't you go ahead and be seated here for a moment. Uh, Brother Ryan made a big mistake last week. And I know it's kind of hard to uh, give yourself a gift, right? I mean, you just can't. It just doesn't work. But he recognized everyone but himself for our minister's appreciation. And um, so thankful that he took the time to recognize the ministry here. Um, and we have others that will be active in the ministry uh, soon. And we thank God for each of you as well. I want Brother Ryan to come. He had us all come up here, so now it's his turn to have. I know it's the last thing he wants to do is to walk down that aisle and accept this. But we appreciate Brother Ryan yeah. and uh, yeah. Sister Michelle and Pastor Marty are probably the only ones that truly realize. Um, the extent of what he does for the church. Amen. He works tirelessly, and uh, Sister Michelle and Brother Finn, they are the ones that feel that and sacrifice, especially in this season that we've been in, but I do thank God for him, and um, Brother Ryan has been with this church from its very beginning and has just been faithful and started out um, Started out and became our youth pastor uh, eventually, and then our assistant pastor, and he has not disappointed in any role in any job that he's been given. And I thank God for him. Let's give him a hand clap today of appreciation for the ministry. And then quickly, some announcements. Home groups will be meeting in the month of November as follows. Mingo Residential Care Group will be meeting on November the 10th at 1 o'clock. That will be a special day uh, with music and different than what we normally do on Thursday. That will be on Thursday, November the 10th. Uh, the Joneses Home will be hosting their group on November the 10th in the evening. Uh, to find out the exact start time, you just need to ask uh, Brother Scott or Sister Jennifer. November the 11th at the Walker Home. And November the 12th at Pastor Brian's Home. That's me. Um, and so we welcome everyone in your particular groups to be a part of our November home groups if we try to get one of these in before the holidays. Um, 
we want to remind you that there will be no um, midweek service the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. <coughs> Excuse me. However, there will be service on Tuesday, November 22nd, that will be a special communion and foot washing service. And we encourage everyone uh, to come out and be a part of that service on a Tuesday evening. Uh, we need Halloween candy donations if you want to help out for the Halloween booth on uh, this Monday. Uh, please see Sister Jamie and uh, we welcome all candy donations and there has been some turned in. We need more to pass out. So we ask that you help us with that. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise uh, the Lord. Uh, Sister Lord. Stephanie will have tickets today after the service for the um, Puxico Christmas music and comedy show. Uh, we've already sold a third of the tickets just in the last week. And tomorrow, something very significant happens, and that is that 40 uh, Puxico band students will be taking ticket order forms to sell. And so I'm just warning you, the tickets are going to be gone. So if you are not involved directly in the play and you're going to need a seat and you have not bought your ticket, or if you have family uh, that you're wanting to buy tickets for, you need to see Sister um, Stephanie today after the service to make sure that you take care of that and that they do have a seat. December the 11th at 2 o'clock will be uh, the time for that. And we're looking forward to just a great uh, Christmas show again this year. And, of course, this is to raise money for the Puxico Band Boosters. So help us out with that. Make sure you have your seat. And as soon as we get past um, uh, into the month of November, we'll be having some meetings with those who are involved in the program and letting you know what you'll be doing. And then, of course, the next week, December the 18th, uh, we will be having our Christmas service here. And I'll just go ahead and give you a heads up. January the 8th, we will be fully launching into our new building. Somebody say, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We're going to start the year off right. And on January the 1st, we're going to have a special prayer service. Uh, we will not have service here on Christmas Day, but on January the 1st, New Year's Day, after you've all done your celebrating on New Year's Eve, that's what most people really enjoy as the holiday. We will have service here on January the 1st. However, it will be different than anything we've ever done. We will be dedicating our new building to the service of God. And we're going to walk through every room. We're going to have a prayer service that day. And we're going to pray over that facility. And we'll be using it some even in the month of December, and maybe late November. Uh, for Wednesday night classes, but we will be starting our new church schedule, and we'll be telling more about that with classes for everyone on Sunday morning, brief classes and and uh, meet and greets going on every Sunday morning, a place for everyone, and uh, we want you to be a part of that. Everybody say January the 8th. January. So January the 1st, we're going to come together. Instead of having a regular service in here, we're going to go through the new part of the campus, pray over it, and then the next Sunday we'll come in and begin a brand new year uh, using what God has just blessed us with. If you're thankful for what the Lord's doing in the church, would you just clap your hands and shout with your voice and give us a praise. He gives all the glory. Hallelujah to your name. We thank you, God, for your blessings. 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 1. 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 1. I'll be reading from this morning. We welcome all of our job corps students in service again today. We do have one first time guest. Good to have Watson uh, with us today. And we're thankful for all of our job corps students. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> Amen. God bless you today. Praise God. Second Kings chapter 7, verse 1 it says, Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel. And two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then a Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? In other words, he was saying, It ain't happening. I don't believe what you're saying. And the prophet said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. And verse 3 says, And there were four leprous men at the entering end of the gate. And they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? Uh -huh. If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city. 
and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. Now therefore come and let us fall into the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. They said, we're out of options here and we already know we're going to die in these other actions, but we don't know what will happen here. And they rose up in the twilight to go into the camp of the Syrians, and when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel had hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. And when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink and carried thence silver and gold and raiment and went and hid it. And came again and entered into another tent and carried thence also and went and hid it. Then they said one to another, We do not well. This day is a day of good tidings, and we hold our peace. If we tarry to the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now therefore come that we may go and tell the king's household. Verse 10 says, So they came and called unto the porter of the city, and they told them, saying, We came to the camp of the Syrians. And behold, there was no man there, neither voice of man, but horses tied, and donkeys tied, and the tents as they were. And he called the porters, and they told it to the king's house within. Amen. I have preached from uh, these scriptures probably as much or more in the past 30-something years as anything I've ever preached. But today I feel drawn back to this same passage yet again. And it stood out to me, these four men who were consumed with leprosy, cut off from the rest of the world, it was them that said, while others did not have the faith, while others did not believe, these men were out of options. And they simply grabbed a hold of one glimmer of hope, and they said, why sit we here until we die? I come to preach to somebody this morning that it's time for you to leave the leper section. Oh, yes, I said it's time for somebody to leave the leper section. If you believe that things can be different this time tomorrow, if you believe that something can change in this service today, just keep doing what you're doing. Let's lift up the name of the Lord. God, we praise you. We trust in you. And we believe that we receive the things that we're asking in your name today. Everybody said amen. amen. God bless you in Jesus' name. You can be seated. Oh, yeah, Brother Steve, just stay right there where you are. That feels good. To get the full effect of this story we just read from the Old Testament, it's necessary to understand the particulars of it. The city of Samaria was under siege by the armies of Syria. The enemy had cut off the supply lines from going into the city. No one could leave the city to work in the fields to harvest the crops because they would surely be killed by enemy soldiers. And so there was a great famine in Samaria. People were facing starvation and they were doing whatever they could to survive. The Bible tells us that the cost of survival was 80 pieces of silver for a donkey's head and five pieces of silver, are you ready? Are you ready for this? For bird poop. Yeah, I don't know if we're supposed to say that for the full bit or not, but that's, all right. that's what it was. <laughs> so they were paying five pieces of silver for a cab of doves done. Right. Now it may sound funny when I say it, but the situation was no laughing matter. Right. And then the day came that the king of Israel was walking by on the wall, and a woman cried out to him for help. And when he asked her what the problem was, she said, this woman said to me, Give your son that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. And so we boiled my son and ate him. Think about this. The desperation. But she said, then the next day when it was time for her to hold up her end of the agreement, she has hid her son, and I'm hungry again today, and I don't have anything to eat. Uh -huh. 
and she needs to produce what she agreed to do. It's hard for us to fathom that two mothers could ever even consider doing something as awful as this, but understand they were desperate. They had hit rock bottom. They had reached the absolute depths of desperation. But it was in the midst of these terrible circumstances that the prophet Elisha stood and proclaimed that he had received a word from the Lord. And the word from God was this. Tomorrow. I want everybody to shout tomorrow. tomorrow. He said tomorrow about this time you're going to have food available and it's going to be cheap. You're not going to have to resort to these desperate measures because God is about to do a work. I truly hope that I can get somebody to believe with me this morning that no matter how bad the situation is that you are in, God can turn it around just like that. I want to help someone to believe today that lives can be changed by the power of God in an instant. I want you to understand that with God, nothing is impossible. It doesn't matter how long you've been stuck in a bad situation. Your tomorrow can be different than you ever expected. Because when you give God the slightest opening, even the most minute expression of faith can mushroom into a miracle. And that's what I'm believing for somebody in this room this morning. In Jesus' name. On the worst of all possible days. God made a promise of plenty. And he said this is going to be a quick work. Now this promise of plenty that was spoken by Elisha in 2 Kings 7 was a prophecy for that particular people for that particular time. And we read in the same chapter where it was literally physically fulfilled. But I want you to know that there is a spiritual promise of plenty that is available to every person in this room and every person that is watching online today. Jesus said in Matthew 5 and 6, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Somebody say, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. This promise is reiterated on the very last page of your Bible. It's as if God wanted to make sure that we would be reminded last of all that it would be the very last thing on a person's mind when they finish up reading everything he is sharing about his will for humanity. There it is in Revelation 22 and 17. And it says, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst Come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Amen. God is ready this morning to make good on his promise of plenty. He is just looking for some of those whosoever wills. I come to preach to you this morning that God is wanting to save our city. And he's just looking for someone who is willing to be used. I come to tell you that God wants to save your family. But he needs a whoever who will pay attention to his promise. I come to tell you that God wants to save you. And he will if you will just cooperate enough to give him the opportunity to turn your situation around. God is looking for some whosoever wills like those four lepers that were sitting at the gate of Samaria who said one to another, why sit we here until we die? I've got some lepers in the house that's going to come and, and sit here at the gate today in their little leper section cordoned off from the rest of society. There's three of them. Where's the fourth one? All right, we got you. Whoever's on the back row is going to have to worm your way in there. You see, we got a special place for people like this, don't we? You see, in the Old Testament, there was a special place for those who were diseased, those who were considered by society to be worthless and even to consider, considered to be dangerous. They had to be off in this little place by themselves. They couldn't go into the, the city 
and enjoy whatever activities were there. They couldn't be a part of society. They couldn't go home to their family and imagine the toll that this would take on you if you were one of those people. But I've come to tell you this morning that there's people in this place right now that you feel just like that. But they said one to another on this day, why sit we here until we die? Right. Now they were the most unlikely candidates to bring God's promise of plenty. They were the least likely uh, candidates because they had no influence in the community. They couldn't even go into the community. They were sectioned off from society. They were outcasts. Nobody cared what was on those lepers' minds. They weren't considered worthy to even be given the time of day. They were the riffraff of the community. That means they were undesirable. They were worthless. They were a bad reputation. But I come to tell somebody this morning that we know a God who desires the undesirable. When he found Moses and called him to lead his people out of bondage, he found Moses a murderer who was living in exile out in the desert on his own. But God picked him up and said, I've got a job for you. David was the runt of the litter. He was the least among his brethren. He was just a shepherd boy and he was overlooked by everyone except for God, But God said, I'm not looking on the outward appearance, but I'm looking at what's going on on the inside. What's going on in your mind right now? What's turning over in your heart today? I want to make a change, and I'm going to find somebody that nobody else cares about, and nobody else would use, and nobody else would have faith in. But God said, I'll take that one, and I'll turn their life around, and I'll make a testimony out of it. Gideon was from the weakest clan in his tribe, and he was the least in his father's house. But God chose him. The twelve who were chosen by Jesus as his disciples, personally handpicked by him, foundational figures of the New Testament church. They were uneducated. They were ignorant. They were fishermen. One was a tax collector. You can't get much more of a bad reputation than that. But he didn't pick the best of society. He actually went and he picked the ones that nobody would have confidence in. And he changed them. Hallelujah. He made something out of them. I'm thankful today that God didn't leave me in the leper section. But he put something in my heart that says I got to come out. I'm out of options. I can't stay where I'm at. If I stay where I'm at, I know yeah. it's not going to end well. And I don't know what will happen if I'll just uh, heed what that preacher's saying this morning. Right. It's time for somebody to take a little bit of risk. Right. Amen? Oh, I know you're here today. That person who feels like out of all the people that God could use, you would be the least likely. You feel like you're the least worthy of anybody, the most undesirable one in the group. You look at everybody else in the church and sometimes you, you feel like no one can really relate to your situation, to your background. The life that you have lived seems so different from everyone else around you and you feel sectioned off. You feel, you feel like you're in your own little world that no one else understands. You might as well have a sign hanging around your neck that says, I'm a nobody. I'm hopeless and helpless. I'm going nowhere. Amen. You might as well have a, a sign around your neck today that says, uh, I'm worthless. Because that's your opinion of yourself. But God has a different opinion of you. He sees someone that can make a difference. I know I'm preaching to somebody right now. And if you are willing to try, that's what God's looking for. Just someone who's willing to try. You are exactly the one that God wants to use and is going to use. Because the truth of the matter is there is nothing quite like a testimony coming out of the leper section. Oh, I, when you talk about a leper, every time I use that word, uh, I have there's confusion. Uh, I was preaching that one time. 
and some of the Sunday school students afterwards, they was talking about those leopards, those uh, big cats, you know, <laughs> that went down. Well, yeah, if God sent four leopards into the camp of Syria, I'm sure they would run away. Amen. <laughs> but it was leopards. It was a leper is a person who is smitten with a disease called leprosy. And that disease literally, that disease literally, uh, the effects of it is that your flesh rots away. Uh, through the joints, the limbs, you literally begin to lose body parts. Uh, and really the reason why is because uh, there's no feeling. Uh, I'm preaching to some people today that life has scarred you over so badly, amen, that you just don't even feel anymore. You don't want to risk. Just to feel something is a risk. Uh, you want to medicate your way and, and drink your way into a place where you don't have to feel anything. I'm talking about leprosy in the spiritual sense. And when our senses are dull, we can we can be around other people if we're allowed, but yet we feel like we're to our own. Nobody understands me. Nobody's been where I'm at. Nobody identifies with the problems that I'm dealing with. And that physical leprosy destroyed the body of these men just as sin is slowly destroying someone's soul in this room today. But I want to tell you this morning that God is wanting us to have, if I could use this term, a rip-rap revival. Yeah. He's not looking for the average sinner that can be cleaned up a little. And most folks probably would never know what they did in their past. No, God is looking for somebody who was eaten up by sin. Uh, he wants to take you and make an example out of you. Uh, make a trophy out of you uh, that hell will have to look at uh, for all eternity. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, I enjoyed Brother Ryan's message last Sunday. Yes, the tragedy of a hidden miracle. Right. It, it just ain't right when God has done something for you that you don't tell somebody about it. Right. Sarah, are you ready to help me this morning? Come here just a second. Now, Sarah, Sarah has shared her testimony with me several times at our uh, Bible study at Mingo. I'm glad that Sarah has repented of her sins and been baptized in the name of Jesus right here, aren't you? Thank you, Lord. But I want you to hear her testimony. I want you to tell them what God's done in your life. Well, I was homeless in Kansas City, Missouri for a while, and it was my choice, but I made a mistake and basically wound up down the wrong road. But I'll tell it at the beginning. I uh, got in trouble in rehab, and they took me to the hospital. And basically, I got done with that. And I decided, out of my own choice, that I didn't want to live in a group home. Oh, I wanted to be free on my own. Yes. So they said, you can be free on your own in Kansas City, Missouri, but you will be homeless. I'm like, okay, I'll take it. I, I think I can do it. Little did I know the wrong mistake I made. And it ended me up three months back to back in Kansas City, Missouri, homeless, without much food, without much water. All I had was a water bottle I filled up each and every day just to make it each and every day. All right. And it wasn't good. I went each and every day cold, <clears throat> sick, wishing to God I could find somewhere to sleep at night. All right. There were times where I went to homeless shelters but filled out so kids and everybody else could have a place to stay. And I went out cold. And one night was a bad night. And I was beelining the highway because I was angry at God, angry at myself. And I'm like, I can't do this anymore, God. Please send me a message. Please send me a sign. Uh -huh. Well, one guy stopped his car and he said, Honey, why are you beelining the middle of the highway on a dangerous <coughs> night? I said, I just can't take it anymore. He said, go sit on the sewer over there, and I will get help for you. He called an ambulance and a fire truck for me, and they stopped 
and five minutes flat of him calling, and he's like, I gotta get to the hospital, my wife's pregnant, you need to stay here. So I sat there, and within five minutes, ambulance truck drive everything. They're like, what's wrong? Why are you acting the way you're acting? I'm like, I'm drunk, I'm high, I'm belligerent, I can't take it anymore. They're like, how long have you been homeless out on the street? I said, three long months. They're like, okay, we're going to take you in and we're going to provide you with help. They took me to a long-term treatment hospital and it was the answer to my prayers. Thank you, Lord. Finally got in everything. Was the best answer I ever got from God ever. Praise God. Love How long you. have you been clean and sober now? 12 years. 12 years clean and sober. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you know what? She ended up in the place that by her will she didn't want to be. Right now she's in a group home here in Puxico, Missouri. But you know why God put her in that place? Because there's a church yeah. within a mile of that facility. And God sent a pastor in there to, to have a Bible study and tell them that God loves you and cares about you. Amen. And today, I'm thankful that she's coming out of the leper section. I'm thankful that she has a purpose in her life. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, let's give God the praise. Hallelujah, when you hit rock bottom and you don't know what to do, it could be that God parked you on the wrong side of the gate for a reason. It could be that somebody uh, is going to be lost uh, if you don't take that chance uh, to trust in God uh, and do what He's put in your heart to do this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Tanya, I believe for your daughter. I believe that things are going to turn around for her. In the name of Jesus, I believe that God's going to continue the work that He started. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ben Ramey, what are you doing over there in that leper section? How did you end up, how did you end up in that condition? I want you to tell me your real story. I want you to tell me what it was like before you knew the Lord. Before I knew the Lord, I did drugs, sold them, drink them. It didn't matter. I had no care in the world. But you know what? God cares about you, and I think it's time for you just to come on out of that leper section. Why don't you come on out of that leper section? Hallelujah. There's a calling that's upon your life. The hand of God is upon you. Praise God. Praise God. Now, I want you to understand that when they went down to the enemy's camp, when they got down there, they said, if we, if we just walk to the Syrians' camp, perhaps they won't kill us. That's our only hope. But what they didn't know is that when they got up and they left the leper section, come on out of there, boys. You don't belong in there. I want you to throw those signs away. I want you to take those signs off. There's nobody that's worthless and hopeless and helpless and going nowhere if you're listening to the voice of God. You know what? The Bible says that nobody can come to God unless he draws you. Right. And the word of God also tells us that he who has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Right. I want to tell you something, Frank Day. There's a reason why that you're in the house of God today. You should be dead. You should be in prison. But there's a reason why that you're here today. And that's because uh, there's a God uh, that puts you at the gate. Uh, the man be the wrong side of the gate. Uh, but he knew uh, that you were going to listen to his voice. He knew you were going to hear that voice. And, and I want you to understand today, those of you in this room, maybe you don't even understand how you ended up here. I want to tell you, it's not an accident. Those thoughts that come into your mind that says, but well, why don't I just try something? I've tried everything else. It won't hurt to go to church on a Sunday morning. I, I think I'll just go. And you think it was just happenstance. You think it was an accident. But it wasn't an accident. That's God beginning a work in you that He intends to perform. And so 
So they went over to the enemy's camp. But when they got there, there was nobody there. But there was something there that, was, that nobody else in the city of Samaria had. I want you to just grab you some of that food and come right out here in front of the camera. I want you to let everybody know that's watching online today, amen, that you can be full in the midst of famine. You can have something that the world doesn't have when you begin to listen to the voice of God. Hallelujah. So they went into one tent uh, and they began to eat. Uh, nobody else was eating but these four leprous men. Uh, they had found the answer and they began to fill their bellies up. Uh, they went into another tent. They found some more food that was left there by the enemy. And they began to eat uh, and they began to fill themselves up. Uh, amen. And the same people that they thought nobody would ever listen to, guess what? Somebody's about to listen. And why are they going to listen? Because you're full. Somebody's hungry. It doesn't matter what your reputation. It doesn't matter what your background. It doesn't matter how far away from God you were. When they see the difference that Jesus has made in your life.
Hey Amen. Those gatekeepers, they were the ones in charge of keeping the riffraff like these lepers at a safe distance. But their attitude changed when they saw that those lepers had food. Hey Amen. When they see that you tasted the blessings of God, they're not going to discount your testimony. And you know, sometimes we think that we're the only ones with issues in our lives. But this story tells us that the people on the other side of the gate were just as bad off as the people on the outside. And you may think they won't believe you. But if you'll go to someone in your family, if you'll go to someone uh, in, in, that you've uh, known your entire life, that knows uh, where, you, where you've been, the kind of life that you've lived, if you'll get an experience with God at these altars today, that testimony, that testimony will bring a change in their lives. When we begin the noise of all the good things that God is doing, Hallelujah, hallelujah. Brother Mike, I want you to be a gatekeeper for me here. Brother Pulliam, stand up and be a gatekeeper for me right here. Hallelujah. Brother Reagan, I want you to be a gatekeeper for me here. And I want you just to shout across to Brother Pulliam. There's revival in Puxico. Jesus, Jesus. There's a revival in Puxico. Yeah. Yeah. I want you to pass it on to there's revival in Puxico. What do you say? There's a in Puxico. Things ain't like it's always been. We serve a God who is able to do exceeding abundantly among all that we ask you. The word got to the king. Now the king did not believe. You know why the king did not believe? Because he wasn't as hungry as everybody else. He'd been saving back some rations for himself. He's about there's not any food. People starve to death, boiling their children, eating them, eating bird poop, eating donkey's heads. And here the king said, I don't believe it. this is a trick. You know why he didn't believe? Because he wasn't as desperate as the rest of the people. And there will be people that you'll talk to that won't believe. But you just go on to somebody who will believe. You find you somebody that's hungry. And if you find somebody that's hungry for God, they're going to respond. And I believe there's hungry people in this house this morning. Praise team, would you come up here and get ready to help us? <laughs> Hallelujah. They finally convinced him, one of the servants, he was real hungry. He said, King, he said, no, you don't believe this. He said, but, but I, saw some, I saw some cheese and pepperoni in this guy's beard, and I believe him. I, his belly's kind of swelled up, and it's not like mine. Uh, for, you know, uh, belly button touched my backbone because I haven't eaten so long. But he said, This guy, I can tell he just had something to eat. I believe him. So he said, Would you just let us take five horses and go down there? And we'll come back and tell you if it's true. The king finally allowed him to do that, and they came back and they said, It's true. And the word of God came to pass the next day, just as the prophet had said. The situation was totally different. And that's the God that I'm serving this morning. He wants to change your life. He wants your tomorrow to be better than today. But you're going to have to make the decision this morning to leave the leper section. you got to leave that leper section and trust that God is going to do something in your life. Amen. I'm not done, but I'm finished. I'm not finished, but I'm done. So stop right here. We serve a mighty God. Amen. He's able to do anything. Amen. And anything we read about in the Word of God that He's ever done, He's able to do right now because He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So I want to open these altars right now for people that want to leave the leper section. You want God to do something in your life. It starts out by just uh, uh, taking that glimmer of hope that you feel in your heart and just coming and turning your life over to God. Tell Him, Lord, I'm sorry for my past, but I can't do anything about it. He will cleanse you today. He will step in and he'll bring you out of this place uh, into a better place. Uh, amen. He'll bring you from uh, the depths of sin and the depths of hopelessness to a place of joy in him. He will fill you with his spirit today if you allow him.